Hello everyone, I'm Freaky and welcome to the video. My friends, I saw the Dragon Ball Daima or Dragon Ball Magic trailer and I think most people have already saw this trailer but if you guys don't know what I'm talking about please go and check out the trailer on YouTube Dragon Ball Daima and you'll know what I'm talking about and then as soon as you watch that come back and watch me talk about what I'm about to say and so with that said, let's go. Now, when it comes to we Dragon Ball fans, the well has been dry for a very long time. All we have is just the manga coming out every month or so, and for some reason they decided to put the Dragon Ball Super Superhero storyline from the anime into the manga. And I mean the anime from the movie, and they put into the manga. And yeah, I know the manga is completely different from the anime, or the anime movie, and they do explain a few things in the manga than what the animated. But the thing is, they never made a manga of the Broly movie. The manga just skipped that. And the manga sort of mentions Broly, and that was it. And you know what? They should have done the same when it comes to Superhero. And if they really wanted to make an extended version of it for both Broly and Superhero, Akira Toriyama should have just made a novel, like a short novel. I think it was Akira Toriyama that made the script of both Broly and Superhero. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. And you know what? That would have been much better than them just making a manga version of Superhero. I mean, look at Bleach. And as we all know, Kubo was forced to end the manga, but we all know that Kubo wanted to continue his story, but Chibesha forced him to end the series. But luckily for us, we still have the novels that carry on the story. And these novels explain everything, like what happened at the end of the war, what happened to certain characters, and so on and so on and so on. And you know what? I'm really glad that these novels exist. And you know what? This is what Akira Toriyama should have done. He should have made the Broly movie and Superhero into a light novel if he wanted the story to be put on paper. I mean, I've been hearing rumours that the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie script had a lot more stuff in it, but they cut a lot of stuff out, and the stuff that was left in is what we see in Dragon Ball Super Broly today. But if Akira Toriyama wanted to keep those things in the script, is two things that he could have done. One, make a light novel, and two, make it into the anime. I mean, come on, we've all seen the Dragon Ball Super movies, so there's really no need to make a manga story of Dragon Ball Superhero. Again, sure, there are a few differences, but those few differences can only go so far. We want to see what happens in the next arc, and their decision to make the superhero movie into a manga is freaking killing us. It's made the Dragon Ball fandom slow down, and we've got nearly nothing to talk about. I mean, yeah, there are things that we could talk about, like the Unseen series of where the Dragon Ball Z movies came from, and how the characters are all there, and where the other characters are within that version of Dragon Ball Z. But, back to the point, if the Dragon Ball Super series does come back, and I'm talking about the anime, if or when it does come back, we all know what's going to happen. They'll make an anime version of Broly, then they'll make an anime of Moro, then they'll make an anime of the Granola Saga, and then finally, they'll make an anime of Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Now, some people might say that they don't want to see the movies made into an anime version. It would be like Battle of Gods and Resurrection OF all over again. But you know what? I say give them a second chance when it comes to this idea. Because when it comes to Broly and Superhero, they do have extra stuff of what they could put in into the anime. Like, we've been hearing rumours that there was supposed to be more stuff within the Broly movie, but they cut out a lot of it from the script. But they could take those things that was in the script, you know, the original script, and they could put all that stuff within the anime. And yeah, I know for a fact they messed up with Battle of Gods and Resurrection OF when it comes to its animation. But I say, let's give the animators another chance to actually fix things. They could have learned from their mistakes when it comes to Battle of Gods and Resurrection OF, and they could make it as good as the movie. I mean, I highly doubt it, but I say, give them a chance. They know what to do now. And the same thing when it comes to Superhero. We both have the movie and the manga, and they can combine those things into one, and they can make the story into what they want it to be. I mean, who's to say that the stuff that was in the manga was supposed to be in the anime movie Superhero. So I say let's give it a chance. Let them turn the Broly movie and Superhero movie and parts from the manga from the Cell Max saga into an anime. So you know what? I say let them do it. I mean heck, there are certain things in the manga that they could extend upon, like Moro using more magic to win his fights. I mean come on, Moro's not only powerful but he's also a freaking magician too. So it would have been nice to see him use more magic in his fights because that was one of the things that really tipped me off when it came to Moro. Well, the only thing that that was wrong with Moro. You're telling me that he didn't have any magic spells that could have helped him against Goku? Because that was one of the things that was missing from this manga. Moro using magic spells to give him advantages in a fight. 
again, he's a freaking wizard. And also, there's the extended fight when it comes to Ultra Instinct Moro. Like, it lasted for like a few pages and that was it. They could extend the anime with this like for an episode or two. And there could be a few more things in the Granol Saga that they could extend on. And make a few good fillers. Yes, you heard me. Make a few good fillers. And yeah, I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say, oh, but Freaky, we don't want fillers. We want them to get straight to the point when it comes to the story of Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I want that too. But when it comes to the Dragon Ball series, there has been some really, really good fillers within the Dragon Ball series. Gohan's time when he was preparing for the Saiyans, the Garlic Junior Saga. Yeah, I like the Garlic Junior Saga. There's good filler and there's bad filler. And they could do this with world building. And you know what? I don't mind that. What I'm trying to say is, when it comes to the Dragon Ball Super anime coming back, they could add so much stuff in the Broly Saga, the Moro Saga, the Granola Saga, and the Super Hero Saga. And these sagas could last for like, like maybe for a few years. And this will please the Dragon Ball fandom and will have material to talk about. Now, some of you probably caught on that I haven't been talking about Dragon Ball Magic or Daima, but there is a reason as to why I brought all this up. When it comes to all these things that they could add into the anime when it comes back, they could also add Dragon Ball Magic to that as well. And listen, I have seen the titles and it was a Kira Toriyama's story. And I've been hearing that it's going to be around 20 minutes long for each episode. So, what does this mean? Well, it could mean that this series might actually might take place between the Cell Max saga and the next saga after that. So, considering that it's Kira Toriyama's work, you could say that magic is also part of the series. And listen, I know there's people out there who's been saying that, oh, it's GT2. You know, Dragon Ball GT2, where Goku and Vegeta and all the other Zubras are turned to kids. And listen, I have some people say, oh, this is the nail in the coffin of the Dragon Ball series. Dragon Ball Super is dead, or the Dragon Ball franchise is dead. It's all over, it's all over. And do you know what I have to say about that? I think those people are dead wrong for two simple reasons. Number one, those people haven't even given this series a chance yet, and they're just writing off like it's nothing. Like, when people saw Goku and all the other Zubras turn into children, everyone was going, oh no, what the hell have they done? What the hell have they, have they done? They turned Goku into a chibi. Oh no, they've turned Goku into a kid. That's it, I'm not watching the Dragon Ball franchise anymore. They've killed it. Again, you guys need to give this series a chance for a few reasons. Number one, Akira Toriyama made the story. And number two, it looks interesting. And listen, I know for a fact loads of people want to see Goku go up to the next level and the next level and the next level of when it comes to his powers. Like, oh, Goku can destroy a city, or oh, Goku can destroy a planet, or oh, Goku can destroy a solar system, or oh, Goku can destroy a galaxy, or oh, Goku can destroy a universe. And you know what? It's not always about the power scaling and how Goku can destroy the next big bad. It's also about the story. Yeah, sure, I want to see Goku beat the next big bad, who's much more powerful than the last one. But if this new series does come between super superhero and the next arc then there's no problem and also there's something that you guys need to remember a villain doesn't always have to be much more powerful than the last in order to be a threat but on how smart the villain is or if goku isn't around it's up to the side characters to deal with the next big bad just like with garlic jr or cell max like with piccolo and gohan and the other zeros i've always said that i've always wanted to have the side characters actually beat the big bad all by themselves without goku or vegeta coming in to save the day like what they did with garlic jr and cell max or when a villain is actually smart like they don't go in guns blazing and they're trying to kill everybody i mean look at cell in the imperfect cell saga cell had to play it smart when he was in his first form he was hiding away from everybody and he was absorbing people and he was also trying to find the android Cell knew that Piccolo was a threat, so he kept his head down and kept everything quiet until he was either powerful enough or he found the androids. Or half how Garlic Jr. took over the lookout and put all the Dark Water Mist throughout the entire Earth, thinking that nobody could beat the Black Water Mist. And you know what? If the big bad in this series is the one who turned Goku and the others into kids by either using the Dragon Balls or using some other means to turn them into kids, so that way there won't be much of a threat when the big bad does go after them. And you know what? I do like this because when it comes to bad guys they're always the strongest after that and the strongest after that and the strongest after that and the strongest after that look at the science look at Frieza look at Cell look at Majin Buu those guys were stronger than last guys but what if this new villain is actually weaker and not as strong as the last big bad that in my opinion is interesting and yes yes I know we all want to see the next big bad and he's much more powerful than the last one and we're all pumped up ready to see what he would do but if you ask me i think that formula might have actually been overused quite a bit in fact a lot but i do like the idea that this guy is much more weaker than previous villains 
but he uses his head, his intellect to try and beat the Z Warriors. Like, he knows he's weaker, like, a lot, lot weaker than the Z Warriors. But he tries to figure out a way how to beat them. Okay, let me back up, and I want to show you guys a few things that was in the trailer, and I'm going to use stills. And I'll get back to what I was saying in a bit. I just want to show you guys something first. Now, when it comes to the first still, we can assume that this is the Big Bad's lair. And when you first see this lair, you know it's freaking menacing from its sunny yellows to its black reds. This kind of makes you wonder, like, where the hell is this place? Is it in another dimension? Is it in some other part of the universe? Is it a place where Beerus and Reese knows about? Or is it in the afterlife? Like, could this be the hell of the Dragon Ball franchise? Like, is this where the big honcho, like the devil himself, the Prince of Hell lives? And yeah, 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 I know there's Deborah and all that stuff. Like, Deborah is like, the, you know, the king of the demon realm. But I'm talking about the afterlife. Like, is there a big honcho in hell? And this is his lair? I mean, come on, just look at that freaking scenery. So when I first saw this, it looked very, very menacing. So that was number one that got me interested. Let's move on to the next thing. And the next still is this. Now, when I first saw this, I kind of sort of had this feel that it was a magic related thing. I mean, that's the way I see it. But this got me thinking. If this is a magic sort of thing, does this mean we're going to be having more magic users or is it going to be something else or what? And then when I saw the next thing, it took me by surprise. But if you guys look closely, you can see two characters there. And if you look at the tall one, the tall character kind of looks like a Supreme Kai, judging by his hairstyle. It might be a Supreme Kai. Then if that's the case, then what the heck is a Supreme Kai doing there? And who exactly is that short guy that's next to him? And also, if you look closely, look at the screens. There's Majin Vegeta, there's Babidi, there's Deborah, and I think there's like Majin Buu there too. And as we get closer, we see them looking at the events of the Majin Buu saga. We see Goku blocking Vegeta's attack. We see the Zebras on Babidi's plateau thing. And again, we see Babidi. And we also see Goku and the Supreme Koi looking out at Babidi's ship. But at the time, the first time I watched it, I didn't even realise what they were doing. I mean, yeah, obviously they were watching Goku and the Z-Warriors, but I didn't know exactly what they were looking at. So you could say that these two are looking at the past of what the Z-Warriors did during this time around the Buu Saga. I mean, the first time we saw Whis, he showed us the past in his magic ball thing, where we see Goku turn into a Super Saiyan the first time against Frieza. So these two might actually be doing the same thing, like what Whis did, but instead they're seeing of what transpired in the Buu Saga. So ask yourself this, why are they only looking at this part of Z to begin with? And you know what, looking at this, I have my suspicions of what this could be. And it could be either one or two things, but I'll get back to this in a second. Now, let's move on to the next one. And the next one is Shanron. Now, this could either be like an intro of showing, hey look, it's Shanron, and he's giving us a nice visual of himself because it's Dragon Ball. Or, it could be the fact that the villains are using the Dragon Balls to turn the Z-Warriors into kids. Goku, Vegeta, Yamcha, Puar, Mr. Satan, the Ox King, Android 18, Krillin, Freaking Piccolo! Even the Supreme Koi and Computer was turned to a kid. We can assume that all the Z Warriors have been turned into kids. Heck, even Trunks and Goten was turned into freaking babies for crying out loud. And Marin has turned into a baby too. Hell, even Bulma's was a kid now. Actually, I wonder if the peel off gang's gonna say, oh no, not again. I bet they've turned into kids again. Because remember, in the manga, they've grown up now. My, Shu, and peel off has grown up. So imagine if they've turned into babies too. Dude, that would be freaking hilarious. And when we see Goku again, he actually has his pole pole now. And that got me thinking. Why does Goku have his power pole if he doesn't need it? He has Ultra Instinct, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan God. Why would he need it now? Now, at this point, this got me thinking. What exactly was the point of the villain turning all the z warriors into kids? And you know what? It's obvious. It was so it would make them weaker. Now listen, I'm not sure if the other z warriors have lost their abilities to transform. But if they have lost the ability to not only transform, but they could have lost other abilities too. Like, remember what happened in GT? Goku couldn't go Super Saiyan 3 when he was in his kid form. It was because Goku's body couldn't handle the power. And it was the same when he tried to teleport or use his instant transmission in GT. So maybe that's what we're dealing with here. The villain made them all kids. So it would make them less powerful and easy to handle. Now, when you look at Trunks, Goten and Maron, it looks like they've been mentally regressed as babies. But in the manga, we know that Pilaf, Moi and Shu could still remember themselves as adults. And yeah, yeah, I know the anime and the manga are their own continuities. But in the anime, they still remember themselves as adults after their wish was granted. So who knows, maybe, just maybe, Goku and the rest of the Z-Warriors might have also regressed mentally and not remembering that they was adults. 
I'm not saying it's a maybe. I'm not saying it is, but it's a maybe that could have happened. So it's a possibility of either, number one, they've mentally regressed, or they're still kids, but they can still remember themselves as adults. So it's a possibility of both, or either. And then the next still is this big, massive, whatever the hell this thing is. And we see this other still, of which we can either assume it's either a flamboyant Supreme Koi, or it's a female Supreme Koi. And this other still is either an old Namek, or it could be somebody else. And the final still is this. And as we can see, we see Majin Buu and Bobbity. And again, this is the majority of what we have saw these two characters watch, the Buu Saga. So it kind of makes you wonder, okay, so what's so important about Majin Buu and Bobbity? At this point of the story, why do these two have a fascination with Bobbity or the Buu Saga? Is it Majin Buu himself or is it Bobbity? Is it just some random footage that they're looking at? Or does the bad guy have a connection with Bobbity or Majin Buu? And if you guys look really closely, we can see that Supreme Koi standing next to a big massive chair. So it could be either one of two things. Number one, that Shogoi is in the chair, or it could be somebody else. Why is this character fixated on Bobbity and Majin Buu? Who are these two? What's their plans? What do they want to do? Well, I'm going to go with a guess here, and I'm going to assume that maybe this new big bad is either related to Bobbity, or could this new bad guy be Bobbity himself? Because remember, we was told that Bobbity, the one that we see with Majin Buu, was a clone. Bobbity was a clone of Bibbity. So, who's to say that there is another clone of Bobbity? I mean, for all we know, there could be like loads and loads of Bobbities throughout the universe. So, if one Supreme Koi actually captures one, there would still be other Bobbities out there bringing mayhem to the universe. So, that could be one, that it's another Bobbity, or two, it's somebody that's related to Bobbity, like maybe a cousin or maybe someone else. Or could it be another wizard? Because remember, we had Bibbity, Bobbity, and we had Moro. And Moro was the most powerful wizard at this point in time of the story. But that does beg the question, why just concentrate on Bobbity when the other Zoo was also facing off against Moro? So it could be somebody that's related to Bobbity, and that person wants revenge on the people who kill Bobbity, including Fat Boo. Because remember, Fat Boo killed Bobbity, and it was also Goku who gave the idea to Fat Boo to kill Bobbity. So again, maybe this new villain might be related to Bobbity. Bobbity, and now he wants revenge on the Zeroes of what they did to Bobbity. Or maybe this new villain was related to Deborah, because remember, it was Bobbity who controlled Deborah, and it was all thanks to Bobbity that Deborah is dead. So maybe this new villain was related to Deborah, and even though Bobbity is dead, maybe this new villain wants revenge on the Zeroes because Fat Boo is now one of the Zeroes. I mean, that's unlikely, but it's just an idea. What I'm trying to say is, there is a lot of possibility of when it comes to this new series. If this new villain is using the Dragon Balls to turn everybody into kids, and maybe forget about their past of being adults, and that's a maybe. I mean, we all know that Shanron can't kill anybody that's more powerful than him, but I guess this was the next best thing of when it comes to dealing with the Z Fighters. If he can kill them, then just make them weaker than him or his minions. And you know what? I do like this idea. We have a villain that's actually thinking. We don't have a villain that's gun blazing and he doesn't know how to detect power levels. We have a villain that's actually planning everything out. Oh, I can't beat this person? Then no worries, I'll just use their MacGuffin to turn them into kids so that way they'll be easy to handle. But the thing is, we don't actually know what this big bad is up to. It could be more than just revenge against the Z-Wars of what they did to Bobbity. Or it could have nothing to do with Bobbity. It could be about Majin Buu. Or it could be the Grand Supreme Koi that's inside of Fat Buu. We don't exactly know what this new villain wants. But you know what? I say that we should give this series a chance. This series has given us so many ideas on what could happen. Again, this series could take place between the Cell Max saga and the next saga that comes after that. But this mini series could take place between the Cell Max arc and the next arc. And if that is the case, then I welcome it. And I love the idea that there's a weak villain out there that isn't as powerful as the next big bad or the next big bad or the next big bad. He's a weak villain, but he uses his brains to try and beat the Z Warriors. And not only that, he might use magic and other powerful things that have something to do with magic. And he could have minions. Like, do you guys remember the Guard Junior saga? Guard Junior was weaker than Frieza, and it was up to the sidecast to actually beat Guard Junior. But this new bad guy is a main villain, and he's weaker than the last big bad. But he uses his intellect to try and beat the Z Fighters. And again, I know for a fact loads of people just want to see the next big bad, the next big bad, who could destroy reality itself. But this, this is a good idea. A weaker villain that uses his intellect to try and win a fight. 
Or maybe, maybe the reason as to why this big bad won't go after and kill the Z-Warriors is because they are friends with Beerus. And this big bad is afraid of the angels and Beerus. So instead of killing them, he turns them into kids. So he won't have to face the wrath of Beerus. So that's another idea. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say something like, oh, this is regression. If Goku has regressed mentally. If I wanted to say mentally regressed Goku, I would have watched Dragon Ball. And you know what? That is true. But at the same time, maybe Goku hasn't mentally regressed and he can still remember himself as an adult. And also, look at it this way. Even though we're all moaning about everybody being turned into kids, there is another reason as to why we should like this series. And that is that this series is expanding the Dragon Ball lore and its world building because this is all new stuff. We don't know who these characters are and where they're from. We don't know their plans and we don't know why there's a, a Supreme Koi with that short guy. So I'll put all the good things about this series in the list. Number one, this series gives us mystery or this trailer gives us mystery into what's happening. Like that Supreme Koi, why the bad guy's turning the he worries into kids. What's the big bad's relationship or connections with Bobbity, if he has any? There's a new location and what's his plan? And why is he doing all this? That's number one. Let's have a look at number two. Number two is it's a weaker villain than the last villain. And again, I like this idea. It's always been the next big bad, the next big bad, the next big bad after that, the next big bad after that. And they're always stronger than the last guy. But this new guy is much more weaker than the last guy. But he uses his intellect to actually beat the Z Warriors instead of guns blazing. So yeah, this is actually very refreshing that the next big bad is going to be weaker than the last guy. But he uses the Dragon Balls, or supposedly he uses the Dragon Balls to turn everybody into kids. So it'll be easier for him to take them down. Number three, this series might actually take place between the Cell Max Saga and the next saga after the Salmat saga. I mean, this is a wild guess. I mean, for all we know, maybe this story takes place after the defeat of Boo and before we met Beerus. And you know what? I'm not sure where this story is going to take place, but I hope it's between the Cell Max Saga and the next saga. And you know what? This makes sense if they do do this, because number one, it's new material. Number two, it's new material that's expanding the Dragon Ball world and lore. Number three, it's continuing the story of Dragon Ball, hopefully after the Cell Max Saga. Number four, it has something to do with Bobbity, or at the very least something from the Boo Saga. So maybe this story is going to be talking about something from the past of Z. Because remember, this has happened in the past, like with Piccolo finding out that he and a Mechian, and Goku finding out that he's a Saiyan. So basically, this series is going to be talking about something from the past. Number five, it as a smart villain, knowing he's out of his league if he goes against the Z Warriors, but as a plan of weakening them, so it'll be much more easier for him to beat them. And also, there's also another thing I've always wanted to know, and that is where does the magicians or wizards come from? Because remember, we've had Bibbidi, Bobbidi, Moro, and supposedly this new guy might be a magician or a wizard too. So if this new villain is a wizard, I'd like to know if there are other wizards out there. Because from what we've seen, all the wizards that we have saw so far has all been bad guys. Again, Bibbidi, Bobbidi, Moro, and supposedly and maybe this new villain might be a wizard too. Or maybe, just maybe, it all has something to do with Fat Boo. Because remember, the Grand Supreme Kai is inside of Fat Boo. And we did see, or supposedly is, a Supreme Kai next to that short guy. So maybe they want to destroy Boo and bring back the Grand Supreme Kai. I mean, that's just the best guess anyways. But heck, overall, I just don't know what they're going to do in this series. Maybe everything I said in this video is all wrong. Or maybe they're like one or two things I'm right about. Again, who knows? Overall, we Dragon Ball fans shouldn't give up and just sweep this series under the rug and just go, oh, which GT2, or oh, this is stupid for what they did to the Z Warriors, turn them into kids. But again, if you guys listen to me, the idea of a weaker villain turning everybody into kids really isn't a bad idea. I mean, come on, it's only temporary, and they'll turn back into adults at the end of the series, just in time for the next saga. And even if you don't like it, I mean, at the very least, it's something then rather than nothing. And it's only a temporary thing for them to be turned to kids. And there are all these positives and mysteries within this new series that we can look forward to, like all the things I said in this video. So we shouldn't be raging and we shouldn't be disappointed and we shouldn't feel sad. We should all be looking forward to this. Expanding the Dragon Ball universe, a new villain, a mystery. At the very least, Akira Toriyama is actually giving us something. And this is something that we can appreciate, that Akira Toriyama went out of his way to make a story for the fans who has been thirsty for more Dragon Ball content. Remember, this is his story. This is Akira Toriyama's story. So I say, as a Dragon Ball fan, I say we should give this series, at the very least, a chance. I mean, heck, for we know, it could be better than the Cell Max Saga in the manga. 
All I'm saying, let's just give this series a chance. And I know for a fact that many Dragon Ball fans want to see the next big bad that can warp reality and he wants to destroy reality and blah 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 blah. And he's the next big strongest guy after the last guy. And again, I find this really really refreshing that you have a villain that knows what he's doing. He's calculating, he's biding his time, and he's planning on how to defeat the Z Fighters. And you know what? That's something I can get behind. So we really shouldn't be raging about this. We should be looking forward to this. We should be excited about this. Yeah, this next guy isn't going to be stronger than Cell Max or Broly or whatever, but at the very least, it's something, like everything else I just said in this video. So come on, guys. Give this series a chance. And at the very least, Akira Toriyama actually gave us something. Like, it's better than nothing. And you know what? Sure, I was angry like you guys. But when I took two steps back and saw in the trailer of what they was going to do, and I thought about a few things, and in the end, I saw possibilities of this series of being good. This series has potential of being good. So, again, I say we should give it a try. Well, that's it for me, guys. What do you guys think? Am I right or am I wrong? Are you looking forward to Dragon Ball Magic, or are you not looking forward to Dragon Ball Magic? Please let me know in the comments below, and let's get a discussion going. I'm Freaky. Peace out. And please, don't forget to check out my other social medias. Please go and check out my alternative video platforms, Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Twitch, and please come and hang out on my Discord server. We can play games, have a movie night or a series night, or you can watch me play a few games. And if you guys have any suggestions of any videos you want me to react to, or any video ideas in general, you can tell me on my Discord. I'm also on Twitter, Gab, Getter, and Paula. I'm on Locals, Tumblr, Minds, and if you guys want to support me, please go and check out my subscribe star. It's like Patreon, but better. All these things are in the description box below, so please go and check them out and subscribe to them. I'm Geek Freak, peace out.